Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and with spending around 900 to 1000 pounds on a new smartphone, you really want to make sure that it is protected moving forward. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the best protection options for the Galaxy S22 and the 22 Plus line of devices. We're going to be covering three different price ranges from the more budget option, mid range, and then the more premium option, so I can give you guys as much choice as possible when picking the best case for your device. Now we're not also just going to look at cases, we are going to be having a look at some screen protectors and also how to protect those cameras around the back because again they are one of the most important and also most fragile parts of a new smartphone. So let's take a look. But before we get into today's video, a quick word from the video sponsor, Spigen. Now they've sent over their Glass TR Easy Fit Screen Protector for the S22 Plus. It comes with an applicator, a screen protector, and is one of the easiest screen protectors I've ever installed. Taking a look at some of the features, you do have easy installation, an oleophobic coating, it's made of real glass, and it has a 9H surface hardness. As you can see, it's got a perfect fit, and you can scan the QR code down the bottom for an easy installation video or I could just show you. So all you need to do is make sure your device is completely clean and then peel off the back film of the easy fit tray. Now once you've done that all you need to do is basically just place it on top of your device and then press firmly and slide across the middle section just here with the arrows and then wait for around 30 seconds for the middle section to adhere. As you can see underneath all of the bubbles are starting to go out to the side and that's probably one of the easiest installations ever especially in terms of lining it up. Then all you need to do is get your squeegee, peel it from the bottom up to the top and then as you can see you will have some bubbles but we will get to those in just a moment and then take the easy fit tray off the top and then remove the top screen protector and you're pretty much set and ready to go. So once you've taken off this top screen protector here you can see that we do have three bubbles but all you need to do is just push them to the edges or you can form one big bubble and then just push that to the side and as you can see they basically disappear and then you're left with a perfect screen insulation and it's so easy to do. Now while the responsiveness of the screen is unchanged in regards to sliding around, the glass itself does have that oleophobic coating so it does a really good job at protecting from fingerprints, you may have to increase the touch sensitivity for the fingerprint sensor. Whereas under the glass obviously you do have an additional layer now so sometimes it doesn't necessarily work every single time but for me increasing the touch sensitivity in the settings it works pretty much every time and you're in and ready to go. It does also work with pretty much any case you can think of, the screen protector itself doesn't go right up to the very edge it basically covers the screen portion of the glass so you do still have a bezel around the edge so the majority of cases will fit no problem at all and of course it's going to be linked in the description down below so first up we have the cheapest of today's cases coming in at around 899 here in the uk and this is the rinky onyx design case so the case itself is quite unique with these bumps at the bottom which basically protects it and keeps it off of the surface and along with the camera protection basically means that if you have it on a table it's not going to be rocking back and forth. Inside you do have a nice soft touch material so when it's going to be touching the back of your Galaxy S22 you're not really going to have any issues of scratches or damage. Now the case itself does have a really nice texture to it. It reminds me very much of skateboard grip tape. Yes it's not necessarily as grippy but it still does a really good job. You've got the buttons on the side along with a textured side rail as well and they do have some very light branding down on the bottom right hand corner as well as a hole for a lanyard. Now it is going to be a TPU case so it is going to be very flexible and move around a lot however when you actually get it on your phone it's going to be very rigid and it's going to stay in place really well. The ridge texture goes along both sides and it does a really good job at being extremely grippy in the hand. You've got ports at the bottom for the speaker and the USB-C ports along with the microphone and then at the top you just have a simple cutout for the microphone itself. So overall a very nice simple case and once you get it on the device it actually fits extremely well this is probably one of the best fitting cases on this list today as you can see the camera has really good protection and it's totally raised now it does have a slightly larger camera cutout than what you may find with some of the other cases on this list but it still does a really good job in regards to protecting it if you're going to put it down on a table and just in general it feels really nice and I'm actually a fan of this cross sort of off-white design that you've got on the back here. Now actually turning on the device and using it, it doesn't really interfere with the edges at all. Some cases that do have a larger lip can sometimes interfere with gestures on Android. Now for this one it does have a nice lay on the table design. It's not necessarily the thickest in the world but if you're going to pair it with a screen protector again you're not really going to have any issues at all and you've got all round protection. It does also lift it ever so slightly more towards the corners themselves. The buttons themselves are extremely clicky and the test that I like to do as well is a double click of the power button to access the camera and again that works perfectly fine no problems whatsoever. 
The case itself does come in different designs and different colors, so if you're not a fan of this more bolder design that I've got here, then there's definitely an option out there for you, but for me, I actually like the way that this looks. It's a little bit unique. Yes, it is black, but it has a little bit of flair to it as well. So that's the Ringy Onyx case. Again, it will be linked in the description down below along with every other case and product that I feature in today's video. Next up then we have Old Reliable and this is going to be the Spigen Rugged Armor. Now this case comes in at around 15 to 20 pounds depending on if it is going to be on sale or not. However, I have seen it sometimes as low as 11 pounds. It has a really nice design to it, a two-tone texture. It's got a very nice design around the actual camera itself and it only has a cutout for the camera and the flash. It doesn't have one large cutout. And then down the bottom it has a sort of carbon fiber looking feel to it and very minimal Spigen branding. Now it does also have some really nice ridged edges that again makes it very very easy to hold and it does also have some glossy accents to it that kind of break up the overall matte design of the case itself. The buttons themselves are also extremely nicely cut out and again you do have that ridged texture. Along the bottom you have the cutout for the USB-C and the speaker and then again along top you have the cutout for the microphone. Now the thing that I really like about this case as well as the design is going to be the airsoft technology built into the corners. So the actual corners themselves are a little bit more padded than the rest of the case and you can actually see it protrudes ever so slightly. So what this is going to mean is if you're going to drop it on the corners which is where the majority of smartphones actually fall, you're not going to have really any problems at all. It does also have this really nice sort of spiderweb design on the inside. Again, this is basically to help with shock absorption. And again, you can see those air cushioned corners there as well. Now, this one again is made of a TPU material, but the fit itself is extremely good. I've never had any issues at all with speaking cases. The fit itself is very precise. And in my opinion, you can't really do better. As you can see, the camera cutout basically has a pill shape for all three lenses, and they do have a separate cutout for the flash itself. Now, the actual cutouts themselves are quite deep, so if you are going to put this in and out of a pocket, especially on the bottom here of the USB-C and speaker, it is definitely going to pick up maybe a little bit more lint and dust compared to some other devices. Again, feeling the hand is extremely good when you've got your screen on and you're actually using the device. And again, it does have a very large lay on the table design. So this one, it doesn't necessarily interfere with the gestures on Android, but it's definitely something to keep in mind if you're going to be swiping up from the home screen or going back on certain applications. The buttons themselves are very clicky. And again, doing the test to get to the camera, double click, and it works extremely fine, no issues whatsoever. However, I would say that on this particular speaking case, the power button for some reason is slightly more squishy than what you're going to find with the volume up and down keys. Now while you can also get something like the Tough Armor case from Spigen, for me the Rugged Armor is a very nice middle ground between being very minimal but also being very protective at the same time. And then lastly, coming in at around 45 to 50 pounds here in the UK, we do have the Samsung official case for the S22 Plus in leather. Now, while it's not for everybody because it is made of genuine leather, what that does mean is it's going to patina very nicely over time and age extremely well. On the inside, you do have a nice soft microfiber lining. However, it doesn't carry over to the camera cutout, which is a little bit of a shame. And as you can see from the camera cutout, you've got three individual cutouts for each individual lens, as well as a cutout for the actual flash itself. I also like the way that it basically mirrors the design of the S22 with the camera cutout. You do have some nice metal buttons on the side here that match the rim of the Galaxy S22 Plus, the cutout on the bottom for the USB-C and the speaker, and on the side completely bare, and then at the top you do have that cutout for the microphone as well. Now while this is one of the most simple cases and probably the most simple case on this list, just in general the feel in the hand is extremely nice. You've got some very subtle Samsung branding imprinted on the bottom there for the Samsung design and it just feels extremely soft once you put your device inside. Now the fit itself is really good, it does have a nice tight fit to it and I'm pretty sure that this will improve over time with the wear of the leather itself. The cutout around back for the camera is nice because it fully protects the cameras and raises them off of the ground. However, one thing that I would say is because you do have individual cutouts, it does make it a little bit harder to clean if you do get dust in there from taking it in and out of a pocket. And the same goes for the flash as well. On the bottom, the access for the USB-C and the speaker is perfectly fine. And just overall, the case itself feels really nice and soft in the hand. Now, one thing to note is the lay on the table design is minimal to none with this particular case, which is a little bit disappointing. Pointing, but then again, if you were putting the case face down, it may scratch and damage the leather. 
The buttons themselves are extremely clicky and I just can't get over how nice this case feels in the hand. The leather itself, like I mentioned, will age really nicely over time. And again, double pressing the power button to get into the camera works extremely well. No issues at all whatsoever. So for me, this is a nice case. It's definitely overpriced at 45 to 50 pounds here in the UK. But if you are looking for a genuine leather case, sometimes it is also on sale on Amazon, for example, and hopefully it will be by the time this video goes live so again linked in the description down below now if you want to take your protection even further you can also protect the camera lenses on the back of your device so the camera lenses themselves are already recessed in the housing so cleaning them can be a little bit finicky from time to time so you can also get yourself a camera tempered glass protector like this one that I've got here so with this one in particular all you need to do is peel off the backing paper line it up with the back of your device in the camera and you're pretty much set and ready to go now it's really important to get this as precise as you can because again if you are going to be using it with any sort of case or anything and just in general where it's going to be around the camera you want to make sure that there's no interference and cleaning the cameras couldn't be any easier with this protector all you have to do is just wipe across without worrying about each individual lens and you're pretty much set you've now got protection on the front of your device with the screen protector the case itself and we've now protected the camera lenses around back and I have to say, I do actually prefer the design of one long glass piece covering all of the camera lenses instead of having the individual glass like we've got on this year's device. So maybe something to keep in mind for next year. And that's going to do it guys for this video on protecting your Galaxy S22 and 22 Plus. Now let me know in the comment section down below what case or protection you guys are using or if you're just not using a case at all and you're going to be risking it. Also if you guys want any more information about any of the products that I featured in today's video of course it's all going to be linked in that description down below. If you enjoyed today's video be sure to give a thumbs up down below and if you've got any questions or comments like I mentioned put them in the comment section below or on Twitter at copper versus glass. If you're not already subscribed now's a great time to do so and once you've hit that subscribe button don't forget to turn on those notifications so you're notified anytime I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.